making poop jerky and saving it for later. On my property, I have several willow feeders. Mine are all in skittable structures, but this design could also be used for an indoor toilet. The design is that there is a big, watertight garbage can that receives the deposit in a chamber underneath the seat. The idea is that the garbage can is really close to the hole, so there is no chance of anything ending up outside of the can, no matter how much digestive distress the supplier might have. When poop and pee are mixed together, it makes things stinkier, and when pee is included, there is a lot of extra moisture that often needs to be taken up, usually with sawdust. A big part of my design is that a urine diverter is included to catch 90% of the pee that wasn't already deposited elsewhere and send it outside. The bins fill up much less quickly and are much less smelly. At the same time, air needs to be able to move from the sitting room, through the seat, into the garbage can chamber, and then up a vent pipe which pulls excess stink and moisture out of the system. The vent is attached to a fly trap so that any flies that somehow make it down the hole and get covered in poop bits can't get out and transfer those poop bits onto people. In my experiments, I have employed both a solar electric fan and a trom wall to vent the space. The solar electric fan generally works, but it involves using a battery which will need replacing roughly every five years and involves moving parts. Not ideal. On the other hand, a trom wall does not require active components. Sunlight passes through glass and strikes a thermal mass made of cob, a mix of clay, sand, and sometimes straw, with the vent pipe embedded in it. An air gap between the cob and the glass helps to hold the heat in. And since the pipe will be warmer inside the thermal mass than in the poop chamber, the air is drawn up the vent pipe by convection. This technique has been successful even in the cold of a Montana winter. Once the bins are full, they are sealed off so that no one opens them and they are allowed to sit for two whole years. After this point, 99.999% of the pathogens in the bin will be dead if there ever were any pathogens. To be clear, this is not designed to be a composting toilet that composts all of the materials. I'm trying for poop mummification or making poop jerky, where most of the carbon and nitrogen is still in the bin at the end. But so far, we have found that a can appears half full after sitting for two years, so the material has broken down a little anyways. Still. When the bin is opened after two years, you will see poop jerky and the accompanying toilet paper, but the pathogens are dead, so it's now safe to use. Some people would feel just fine with placing the finished material in their garden around all of their food crops. After all, the idea is to cycle the nutrients back into the food. I prefer to play it extra safe by placing the contents of the can at the base of a willow, cottonwood, or poplar trees, that is, away from edible plants, and covering them up with sawdust. I refer to these tree species as poop beasts, plants that thrive in nutrient-rich environments. They will happily eat up all the nutrients provided by the finished material, bringing them back into the ecological system. Maybe someday they'll get cut down and put in a hugelkultur bed. And then the nutrients will have come full circle.